Hello, and welcome to Radio Production. And this will be our first uh, class today. This will be our first session. And so we're going to be talking about the whole phenomenon of radio and why you might want to consider doing this. And so here we are uh, in our first class, talking about radio. So the first thing I want you to think about is radio as a concept. What is radio? What really is it? So if we go here, let's say... Radio as a phenomenon, and the reason why we're talking about this is it's kind of important to understand that uh, radio is very important. It has its roots in the history of the, of the communication world, and as a technology and also as a phenomenon, it is highly important because before the uh, era of broadcast radio, there really wasn't anything like it, meaning that before you had radio, you had newspapers and you had magazines and books and libraries and dusty volumes of paper. And uh, basically, your houses were silent. People had musical instruments because that's the only way they could hear anything uh, besides speech. And so uh, everything, uh, any kind of entertainment you know, was for performed live. You would have orchestras and stuff like that. Nothing against those things, by the way. Uh, but radio provided something else. And so... Uh, if you look at the history of uh, communication technology, going way back to the 1830s, the, uh, the telegraph was actually an amazing invention because it gave the ability to communicate instantaneously, even if it's just da 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 that sort of thing. And so really, the beginning of the 20th century, you know, the 1900s, that's when we get radio as a phenomenon. And so the idea being that you started out as, as wireless. Uh, Marconi invented the wireless radio system. And fortunately, he did because the people in the Titanic really had reason to thank him back in 1912. Uh, because if it weren't for that, nobody would have known they were sinking. And so basically, any survivors that managed to get into life rafts probably would have died before they reached any help. And so uh, wireless communication is definitely an incredible development. Uh, then... From Marconi, we have the masters of radio broadcasting, uh, David Sarnoff, you know, Lee, uh, Howard Armstrong, and uh, Lee DeForest, uh, who collectively created what we think of as radio technology and the idea of radio networks. And those eventually grew into television networks, uh, and that really blossomed into what we know today as the electronic media. And so... Uh, there it is. That's radio technology. And then radio then uh, gradually changed to accommodate uh, the, the increasing world. Television uh, started out as the enemy of radio, but radio found its place. And so that's what we're going to talk about next. Uh, the radio voice. Now, what I want to do is I want to basically accentuate why this is important. The radio voice. Uh, and if you look at the way when radio, the classic radio, when it first started, it was doing everything. Radio and television were essentially the same thing. You know, you would turn on your little radio box and you would hear music and you would hear uh, speeches. You would hear all kinds of crazy things. You'd hear radio dramas and stuff. Along comes television and everyone says, why would we bother with radio now that we can have television? So you can look at these, uh, you can watch the movies, you can watch the dramas and all these things. Wonderful stuff. And so radio had to strip itself away from the visual. Uh, now, uh, it's important to understand, radio was, was sentenced to death, but it didn't die. Radio could not be killed uh, because the essence of radio was, uh, was not destructible. And so, the essence of radio, therefore, I'm going to call the radio voice. Uh, because uh, radio had to come up with something that was not visual, and so you had music and you had conversation, and so as long as you are willing to listen to this particular radio voice, whoever happens to be talking, uh, and, and you think of that person as a friend who is guiding you or who is sharing information with you, uh, then there will always be a need for that voice. Now, uh, you could also say that gradually radio was threatened again. Uh, you might not realize it, but there's no longer any such thing as broadcast television. Basically, it's all cable now. All of the original television networks, all the original television stations uh, were removed and converted to digital. And so this happened without you realizing it, either because you had cable or because you got some sort of a box to put on your television set, which would allow you to get digital television. 
And so there it is. And so people said, well, what's going to happen to radio? And at one point they said, well, maybe they'll stop putting radios in cars because they wanted to go to this XM format, which uh, is digital in nature. So far, radio has managed to survive yet again. Uh, but I would suggest that the next transition will be away from what we may think of as traditional broadcast radio to something more akin to the podcast, you know, the, um, the, the Internet-based station. All of those are possibilities. And so, uh, but either way, let's say, let's say it happened. Let's say radio is dead as a doornail, and the only way you can uh, listen to radio is to listen to podcasts. Well, I would say that the person who was the radio personality still has a job. They're just doing it some other way. So as long as you have a desire to listen to your favorite news anchor and your favorite radio talk show host or your favorite DJ, whatever it is, radio will always be alive. And so for that reason, never let anyone tell you that you cannot work in radio or that radio is on the out. It's just, people have said that every year for generations. It's never going to happen. Uh, it, it's just going to change form. And if you want to do it, you can. So terrestrial radio versus digital radio, uh, just to understand what that means, uh, if you have a terrestrial radio station, that means that somewhere you've got a big radio transmitter and you're transmitting into the airwaves uh, on a given frequency that the FCC assigns you. And uh, one of the things I have noticed, if you go to any radio station, uh, you will see this uh, this beautiful lobby, maybe. And uh, if you if you get a tour of the station, they'll show you where the where the radio personalities talk. Maybe a little green room where they prepare. But one thing that you will never see is the transmitter, because it's usually out in the back of the parking lot. There's a little bitty building right next to a big huge tower, and nobody gets in there, except every once in a while someone will drive up in a truck. You know they'll unlock all the locks on the door. There may be three of them. And then they'll walk in, hang around for a while, and then leave. And what they're doing is checking and make sure they're not violating FCC rules concerning their, their broadcasting. And so, really, that is it. But that's not to say that there's not jobs there. That's just not really part of what you may think of as radio. Now, with uh, digital radio, we're almost the same thing, meaning that we have our radio station with the same exact microphones. We've got, we're recording audio. We're working with audio. But then instead of going to a transmitter shed at the end of the parking lot, it's going into the wall, uh, into the network connection. And it's going up to a radio server where it is then broadcast out uh, to the four winds of the Internet. And so that's basically how that works. Now, career opportunities. Understand that uh, the radio personality actually carries other jobs as well. Uh, for example, let's say, well, I, I, I know a particular radio personality that I like who's always talking to somebody he calls Mr. Producer. So, Mr. Producer, can you queue up the next thing? And so, uh, whoever that happens to be uh, is always Mr. Producer and Mr. Call Screener. Someone is in charge of taking incoming calls and uh, sending that information ahead. And so, there's a production staff, there's a sales staff, there's a technical staff. There's all kinds of ways that you can do this. There's also, of course, a promotion team which handles radio promotion, printing out the logo on T-shirts, uh, sponsoring live events, all those different things. And so there are jobs here. There is money here. As long as people are listening, there's always going to be money. Sometimes there's a lot of money. You can have people that make a fortune doing this stuff. At the same time, you can have people that nobody's ever heard of. It's just the way it is. And how, how high you go up the ladder is up to you. Okay, the technology that we're going to be dealing with in this class is essentially recording and manipulating audio. You record your voice into the microphone, you mix that into a, a finished product, you may be using music that's recorded elsewhere, uh, you may be providing sound effects, all that together is really just the manipulation of audio, does not require very much in terms of computer resources. It's very easy to do. Uh, then, of course, we have the internet, you'll have to upload your work, and you'll have to supervise it. Okay, class meetings. And this will be relatively uh, simple. Uh, we're doing the hybrid approach, meaning that um, I've, I've canvassed all of you, or I've asked um, you to, to, uh, to weigh in. Those of you who responded to my, uh, my request have told me that uh, many of you are, would prefer an on-class approach. 
Many of you can't do the on-class approach. Many of you may do the hybrid approach. Uh, but one way or another, we're going to have a little bit of both because that's just the nature of how this all shakes out. So we will have some online lectures and demos, meaning that uh, some of the software is demonstrable through this format that you're looking at now. Uh, lectures obviously are. Some of it, on the other hand, uh, really requires physical meetings, uh, the lab demonstrations. Now, that's not to say that if you can't physically come to class for whatever reason, that you're screwed. The simple fact is, uh, it's easier to demonstrate some of these things in the physical sense, uh, but we can work something out if, if for some reason you simply can't go to class. Uh, facilities and software, uh, we have a recording studio uh, and we're using the Adobe software. So it's actually very, very uh, easy to get access to. All of that stuff is provided for you. Now, hypothetically, if you can't make it to the uh, lab sessions and you have to, for some reason, create your uh, programming elsewhere, really you just need some means of recording audio in a professional manner and some means of editing audio, which the average laptop actually has a lot of that capability. I'm not saying that that's the best approach, but it is possible. Okay, an extra help is available by appointment. If you need to speak to me, we can work something out uh, one way or another. Okay, the class policies. Everything is on the syllabus. You, are, you can see the syllabus online. Uh, if you have a paper version of the syllabus, that's going to contain the same information. Attendance is based on assignments, meaning that I will be keeping track of when you turn in your assignments. That's how you are being graded for attendance in the course, even if I don't see you very often. As long as your, your work is getting done, uh, that is attendance. Plagiarism in the digital world. Uh, it is theoretically possible to steal content from radio. It's very difficult to do and very difficult to get away with. Uh, let me tell you a couple of ways that, well, a couple of ideas come to mind. Now, first of all, uh, we had one person who, on the surface, you might say he was plagiarizing. His show was a collection of old-time radio rebroadcasts, and he was kind of curating them. Now, that in itself is not plagiarism because that's the nature of his show. Uh, and, and the way he ended up doing it, I felt that he didn't do enough curating, but still, I didn't consider it plagiarism. Now, there was another situation that may not appear like plagiarism, but it really was. We had somebody who uh, kept rebroadcasting the same show more than once, pretending it was a different show. And so it kind of broke down when he talked about events that were happening weeks ago. It's like, wait a minute. So, yeah, don't do that. You know, do, do your original work, and we'll talk about what you're responsible for. Time slots and responsibility. You are going to be given one hour of the broadcast day. So that means, let's say that your hour is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Every 2 o'clock in the afternoon, seven days a week, people will hear you. Now, that's not to say that you're going to have to be there every single one of those 2 o'clocks but you will have to generate two hours of radio programming, which really means two shows uh, that, you, that will be done live. And the, uh, the remaining shows you know, uh, outside of those two days that you go live will be reruns. Uh, and you have to generate a minimum of two hours worth of content uh, in order to, uh, to meet the class requirements. We have tutorials and resources available to help you out. Those are on the... Uh, on the class resource page, which we'll talk about. Now, the uh, formats necessary for audio assignments, uh, you must turn in any audio work in the MP3 format uh, or possibly the WAV format. Anything that you upload has to be MP3, though. Uh, live work cannot be resubmitted. Sorry. Uh, but what I mean by that is you're required to generate two hours of radio content per week. So, if a week goes by and you have not broadcasted anything, then guess what? You have not created, you, you fail for the week. And so you can't say, oh, well, I'll just make that up. I'll just broadcast four hours next week. Well, does it work that way if, with other lines of work? You know, let's say that, uh, that you had a real radio program where you were supposed to be out at two o'clock and you didn't show up. Oh, I can just do four hours next week. No, you can't. You know, because the radio time slot, somebody else has that time the next week. 
And uh, basically, it's a very inflexible system because if someone is sitting by their radio ready to listen to you because they want to call in or they want to hear what you have to say and you're not there, they're going to be mad. You know, they have not gotten what you promised to deliver to them. And so that becomes an issue. And so then if you try to, to say, well, I'll just, I'll just uh, record this stuff and I'll just put it up on the website, maybe nobody will notice that I didn't go on last week. Well, if that's the case, then you're obviously not doing a very good show if nobody notices if you're not there. Uh, but I'll notice, you know, because uh, that's part of, the, that's part of the, uh, the job that I have to do is to check and make sure you're doing all this stuff. Okay, FCC rules. Uh, don't cuss and swear all the time, uh, or at all, really, uh, because as much as I don't necessarily want to see the FCC governing content of anyone's radio programming, let alone ours, who aren't even broadcasting, I will say that uh, laws of decency uh, should be enforced, meaning that we don't want to hear the F word on your radio program. We don't want to hear it in your music. We don't want to hear it in anything that you put up there, only because it's just not appropriate. It's not professional. You know, because uh, it's, uh, it's broadcasting under the Methodist University umbrella. And so uh, we're going to keep to that. Okay, freedom of expression with responsibility. Now, uh, let me just say one thing just to make sure we get this across. Uh, we don't do speech codes here. You know, this isn't 1984 where we have things that you can't say, topics you can't talk about. Uh, the simple fact is you can be controversial as long as you do so professionally. And if you're doing things right, you're going to have some people that don't like what you have to say. But we have the First Amendment in this country. No one's going to say that you can't talk about things as long as you do so in a professional manner. The resource page. On the resource page, we have the current syllabus, we have the YouTube channel, and we have the main radio website. And so those are, are where you will find, uh, you'll see yourself listed in, in time slot. When, in fact, you get one, uh, you're not automatically assigned when you get to uh, bid for it. So, for example, if you want the 2 p.m. hour, you've got to ask me. So just send me a proposal. This is, the, this is the show I want to do. This is the time slot I want to do it. And you're on. And you have all the tutorials that you can possibly imagine. Now, the YouTube channel has all the tutorials, uh, but they're also listed in the syllabus when they show up. And I may suggest more tutorials as they come along. Now this, for example, this uh, lecture was listed in the course module. Other such lectures will be as well. And of course that's through Canvas and that's where we are. Okay, now there is a textbook. I will never try to prove that you read it or bought it, uh, but it is. Uh, it does contain some useful information about the radio industry and I thought it was nice that, nice that it exists. Okay, the major assignments. Your radio program's worth 30%. That's where the real work of the semester is. Uh, do your radio program. So if your radio program uh, does not turn out all that well, well, it affects your grade. If you haven't uh, dedicated yourself to it, well, there you go. Uh, but, and, and let, let's be honest, really all you gotta do is talk into a microphone. Now, let me make one caveat here also. Let's say that you don't have any listeners. I don't consider that your fault necessarily. Although promotion of your radio program is part of the radio program, but if you uh, if you don't end up having huge numbers of followers, that's not necessarily your fault. So you're not going to be graded on popularity. You're going to be graded on, what, how, on how well you execute the radio program itself, which is based on the syllabus. You have to do promotions and sweeps regularly. You're expected to produce online content every week. You've got sponsors that you make commercials for. And so that's part of the uh, that's part of your grade. You have to produce a production log, which uh, identifies you know what's going on in the uh, in, in every 15 minutes of your broadcast. You know only because that's uh, that's part of how real radio works. And you're going to have weekly exercises that kind of dovetail with the promotion sweeps, etc. And that all comes out to 20 percent. And of course we have the exams. And so that's basically the course in a nutshell. And by the time you're done with this, you'll know whether you like radio or not. And it may be something that you want to do. It may be something you don't want to do. But there it is. And I hope you enjoy it. And uh, thank you for listening today. And I'm glad to have had the opportunity to talk with you.